We have had, over the 12 years of doing the Most Powerful Women package in the magazine, we've had three number one women on our domestic list. And it all started with Carly Fiorina in 1998. She was number one on the list for six years. And then the next number one on the list was Meg Whitman when she was running eBay. And today's number one, or last falls, we'll see this year, but um, Indra Nui, the CEO of PepsiCo. Now, two of those three women are running for office representing California. Meg Whitman is running for the Republican ticket for governor. And um, Carly Fiorina is running for the U.S. Senate to represent California. She's running against Barbara Boxer, whose campaign Senator Feinstein is chairing. That's correct. I find it really interesting that these women who spent their careers in business are now branching out into politics. And does it surprise you that these women are going into this space? And what's it all about? I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. I think there is a view that you can jump from a corporation or a big company right away into the political arena and that you really don't have to do your apprenticeship anywhere else because you know everything there is to know about running this company and therefore you bring a whole set of assets uh, to whatever office you're going. That may or may not be true, but the, the arena that we work in is a totally different arena than the corporate arena. You can't give orders and they're not immediately carried out. Uh, maybe the, the president can, and even in some respects he cannot because he has to get the views and the legislation through two houses of Congress. So I think it takes a kind of perceptiveness, sensitivity, and ability to work with a very diverse group of people that you do not necessarily have in a corporate environment. And that is very different. Therefore, the ability to adjust yourself to sit around and debate something, try to solve a problem, go through maybe days of negotiation on a big bill, whether it's health care, whether it's uh, financial reform, uh, whether it's immigration or anything else, is what really, I was going to say, separates the men from the boys. <laughs> but what really indicates whether that individual can handle the arena. And that's all unknown. You don't know that. Um, Meg Whitman is going to spend a great deal of money. She has already spent $60 million. She is debating her opponent, whom is at like 10% in the polls, Steve Poisner, the insurance commissioner of the state. And um, she's hammered away and hammered away at him uh, in an amazing television buy. And that, I would say, of the $60 million, except for consultant salaries, probably all of that has gone into television. And she can afford to do it. Now that, I've got to say, is a big thing. Whether people begin to feel, oh, she's trying to buy the race, oh, she won't come to my event, oh, she won't answer questions at a press conference, Oh, we can't catch her outside the room. She won't answer our questions. And that becomes anything that is substantial enough I can't comment on. Uh, Carly has essentially the same record. So they have never had a chance to really cut their teeth on a city council, on a school board, on a local office, on a state office, prior to going for the big ones. And. I don't know, I, I think if I have a strength, it's I was a county supervisor for nine years, I was mayor for nine years, I worked my way up. Mm -hmm. And I think I have a sensitivity of what, and a desire of what I wanna do, which is work across party lines, which is solve problems, which is bring any talent that I might have to the solution of a given problem. I'm not particularly interested in this, I'm really interested in this mm -hmm. to the greatest extent. And I think that comes 
from a seasoning over a period of time. And that's why I always say to women, do your apprenticeship, earn your spurs, show your value, because women have enormous value.